now okay so good morning guys uh this is our physiology class um we're going to go ahead and get started with our module for this unit on the endocrine system so i'm going to go ahead and share my screen with you guys if you can all please um take a look at schoology with me so you know what we're doing so like i introduced to you guys already um i've reconfigured the class a little bit so that now um, we have modules that we can work on at our own pace. Um, can everyone see my screen okay? Yes. Okay, good, okay. So remember guys, um, the module that we just finished is the one I called cardiovascular. And the last assignment you just completed was the discussion board on ECG waves. So thank you to those students that turned them in um, yesterday. Um, I went ahead and I gave feedback to everyone. So if you didn't get full credit, just read my feedback. That's what feedback is for, right? Just fix what I'm telling you to fix. Um, if you're happy with the grade, that's fine. But again, discussion boards, these are minor points. They're not gonna kill you, right? But I'm just telling you, you know, what you can improve upon. So please, um, if you haven't already done so, click on your discussion board for the ECG waves and just read the feedback that I, I'm sorry, just read the feedback that I told you. I told you, elaborate here, fix that, add that. So you can check those grades on your own if you wanna change that grade, okay? So we're officially done with this module on the cardiovascular system. And so we're gonna move on to the next module. And like I said, I'm just introducing it to you. Um, and this one is called the endocrine and hormone, mar ma sorry, module. And like I said, the, um, this is like the, the template for all modules from here on out. We're always gonna have a set of notes. We're always gonna have a set of assignments, some set of a formative assessment. Does anyone remember what I said formative assessments are? Um. I'll just click on it for you. It's so is it it's going okay. to be like a quiz, guys, like it says here, okay? So we're going to have a set of notes, a set of assignments, a quiz, a discussion board, and an and a summative assessment. And summative just means like the end of the unit, okay? So this will be like kind of like your, your wrap-up project for this unit. So any questions about how modules are made up in this class? Any questions? If you're good, just give me a thumbs up so I can move on. Okay, Anna, good. Haley, good. Natalie, good. Daisy, good. Natalie, Angel, Ashley, good. Okay, good. So most people are giving me thumbs up. All right, so thank you, Brianna. Okay, so again, like I said, thank you, Scarlett. So the, the, these are the, the, the parts of the module. So let's go ahead and get started with the, with the beginning one. So for this uh, module, the first thing I'm going to do is uh, when I break you out into your groups, I'm going to have you guys watch my endocrine learning objective. Remember how in class, like I said, I would have you guys read on my board what I would say, like, you know, in this unit, we're going to do this and complete that. So this little video, it already says that. So I pre-recorded this. And again, I'm doing this for the students that are absent because I noticed we have a small class today. So they can actually watch this on their own. But I'm going to have you guys in discussion board Zoom groups, I'm going to have you guys, not discussion boards, sorry, in Zoom groups, you're going to go ahead and watch my objective so you know what we're going to talk about today. And then when you do that, I'm going to have you guys look at the notes uh, with me, and I'm going to uh, ask everyone to um, uh, just follow along with me here so you know what you're going to talk about in your Zoom group, okay? So once you get into your Zoom groups, which is chapter seven, the endocrine system, I'm going to have you guys. Again, first go over what the learning objective is, and I typed it up for you also. So again, I like multiple learning styles, so audio, visual, whatever, but I typed it up and I put it in a video in case you wanna see my face, all right? So here is the objective. And then what I'm gonna have you guys do in Zoom groups is talk about the investigation in chapter seven. So 
This is something we used to do in class where I would have us uh, do these case studies. You guys remember that where I would have you guys just partner up with someone and come up with an idea for what could be happening to this person. And then you would do a think pair share where you guys would record your ideas. Remember that you would make a prediction and all that. Do you guys remember that? Yes. Okay. So what you guys are going to do in your zoom groups today, just to introduce this unit is you're going to have one person, read what the CSI investigation on page 258 is all about, and then just come up with an idea for what you think is happening, okay? So once you do that, then we're gonna come back together, and then I'm gonna officially introduce, like we always do in class, what the chapter is about. Does that make sense, guys? Yes. Okay, so here we go, guys. I'm gonna break you up into groups. So again, please, what you're going to do, I'll say it again, and I'll go slow. I know sometimes I talk fast. You're going to listen to my objective. Then you're going to open up my notes and do the uh, CSI investigation um, think pair share on page 258. Clear? Yes. Okay, here we go, guys. I'm going to break you up into groups now. So we're a small group today. Um, so I'll do, why don't we do, Okay, we have we have only have a few people. We'll do three groups. Okay, so in those groups, if we could just have one person uh, just read out loud what is the CSI investigation on page two fifty eight and what you think is happening. All right, so here we go. You're going to get an invite from me to go into your group now, and I'll be jumping around per group. Then once we're done talking, about ten minutes or so, I'm going to break us all up. Okay, here you go. Accept my invite, please. Wait, what page was it? It was like 270. 258. 258, yeah. I'm going to put it in the chat dialog for everyone to see too. So. so read it out loud, please, the group. Does someone have their book open? Hello? Yeah, I have my book. Okay, can you read okay. it out loud for the group, please? Yeah, uh, case study investigation number seven. Imagine that you are in a clinic examining a, a 12 year old female patient. Her parents are concerned about her excessive facial hair and the deepening of her voice. Further conversation with Hi guys, so who's reading the case study for us? No, I think we're looking for you. Okay, it's page two fifty eight, guys. Who has their book here? Ashley, Scarlett, or Haley? I don't have mine. How about Haley or Scarlett? Mm, I don't think so. Scarlett? She Scarlet. says she has her book. Oh, okay, okay. So Scarlett, are you uh, reading us the case study? Hello, Scarlett. Oh, sorry, I have it. Okay, okay, page 258. Um, ready, okay? Yeah, imagine that you are in a clinic examining a 12-year-old female patient. Her parents are convinced.
Hi guys, so who's reading the case study for us? The volume is working on my phone. The volume isn't working? No, but I just grabbed I can hear you okay. No, like the video we're supposed to watch. Oh, oh, it, it, it's okay to say the, the video, like I said, is basically, it's, it's in my note. It's because I recorded it for those people who would rather just like hear my voice and see my face. But it's the same slide on slide two of my PowerPoint for the notes. So, so don't worry about that. But uh, do one of you have your textbook with you? I don't. How about Anthony or Brianna? Do you guys have your textbook? I don't. How about Anthony? Anthony, do you have your textbook? I know you don't have a mic, but can you at least type? Anthony? Anthony? Okay, what I'm gonna do guys is uh, the other groups, they have their books and they're reading it. So I'm gonna break up this group and I'm gonna send you guys to other groups, okay? Okay. Sound good? Okay, so let me, let me uh, break this group. I see you, Anthony, thank you. And I'm gonna send you two different ones, okay? So give me a second, all right? But uh, please make sure that you have your textbooks next time because again, this is still from the book, okay? So I'm gonna, I'm gonna break this group. Um, so you guys are group three, and I'm gonna send you guys to different ones, so. Okay, so Anthony, I'm gonna move you to Okay, Anthony, you should get an invite from me now. Uh, Brianna, I'm gonna move you also. And don't say I'm gonna move you too, okay? Hold on. Okay, so you should get an invite now. Okay, did we get a chance to read it? Yeah, we read it. Okay, um, I just added uh, Dulce and Anthony for you guys because in their group, uh, no one had the book. So can you just uh, refresh everyone's memory or Natalie or whoever, Daisy, Anna, can you just give like a brief summary of what the case study is about for them? Yeah, okay, so uh, this is a 12 year old female patient and she has excessive facial hair. Her voice is deepening. Um, she started to develop pubic hair at the age of seven. Um, she is well above average in height for her age. So she's tall. She has large amounts of acne on her face and the back of her neck. Um, she's losing weight rapidly and her muscles are well developed. Um, yeah, that's like the main. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much, Natalie. Okay, so. Uh, Dulce and Anthony, I know Anthony, you don't have a mic, but so based on that, mm -hmm. Dulce and Anthony, you can type, what do you think is happening here? I mean, does this sound normal to you guys? She's 12? Yeah. Um, not really. Not really, right? Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully not, right? Hopefully this isn't happening to you, especially as a female, right? So this is obviously something unusual, right? So what I want you guys to do, and Anthony, I know you have just your your chat box just come up with a couple ideas remember how we used to do in class where we would do like the three columns and you would say I think this is happening so just come up with a couple of ideas together uh, include Dulce and Anthony please and then I'm gonna break up this group and then we're gonna come back together as a class to talk about what could be happening okay okay, okay I'm gonna I'm gonna leave this group now and then I'm gonna break you all up in a second thank you guys Oh yeah, she started developing hair at seven. Okay, so is that is that normal, Scarlett? Or everyone else, Haley, Ashley, Brianna, is this normal? No. No, right, especially not for a female. <laughs> not for a female, right, which you all are. So what I want you guys to do, if you haven't had a chance 
uh, to do so. I just added Brianna to your group, by the way, because no one in her group had a textbook. So if you guys could please just talk about this a little bit and tell me what you think is happening, okay? And then I'm gonna break mm -hmm. this in. Okay, thank you guys. Okay. So talk a little bit. What do you think is happening? Um. <clears throat> Maybe her her glands are just like, producing too much hair. Okay. Or maybe it's in her gene. Okay. How about Ashley? What do you think? Oh, I was just gonna say that like maybe her like glands are like producing a lot of like hormones. Okay, good, good. Yeah. And again, remember, yeah, very good, Ashley. And remember, this, this this module is all about hormones, so you're definitely on the right track. How about you, Haley? What do you think? Um, that, like, she's, she's um, experiencing, like, like, her hormones are changing, like, quickly at mm -hmm. a young age at a young before age. getting everything. Okay, no, good, good, good. And do you have any ideas, Haley or anyone else, as to what could be causing that? Because obviously this is not normal. So any ideas as to what could be causing those changes that Ashley and Haley are talking about? Brianna, do you have any ideas? Oh, um, I think maybe she has too many hormones in her body. Too many hormones? Like, yeah. Okay. And are these, these changes that are happening, that scarlet reddish, are those normal like overall like do they happen later in your age or is it just abnormal period do you think later in your age yeah later. they happen later okay okay. <clears throat> okay so so very good so keep talking guys i'm gonna go check in with my other groups and then i'm gonna bring us all together okay thank you guys All right, so I'm breaking up our group, so everyone should be coming back to the main room now. I'm gonna wait till everyone exits their current discussions. Good morning, Alma. Morning. What I'm doing now, Alma, because I know you showed up a little late, is I'm recording these classes now. So you can actually just rewatch what you missed, okay? Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. So I'm gonna start doing that from now on. So I know you don't have your camera on, Alma, but please don't turn it on anymore. Because what I'm gonna do from now on is I'm just gonna always record them. So for people that are absent or they show up a little late, they can always just rewatch it, okay? So so don't ever turn on your camera, please, okay? Mm -hmm. so, like student privacy. Okay, good. So we have everyone back. And what we did, um, just to refresh Alma who just joined us, what we did is we read the case study for chapter seven, which is about uh, a, a young girl who is experiencing some, some, some change. And the title of this chapter is the endocrine system. So can we just do a brief little share out? Because we had uh, three different groups and we had lots of people you know, talking and giving ideas. So can um, a couple of people tell me what you think is happening to this girl in the case study? Anyone, please. Okay, so my group said it might be because she has too much testosterone in her body or excessive hormones. Okay, testosterone. Okay, good. Good guess, Anna. Anyone else? Anyone from the other groups, please? Um, my group had also said that um, she probably had like too many hormones. Okay. Like, okay. And um, yeah, I was I was just in Ashley's group, and um, we also uh, mentioned that some of these changes um, are probably normal. They're just kind of abnormal for such a young age. Was kind of what that group said. So. Um, before we start talking about hormones, can you guys list for me any hormones that you think you've heard of before? Like I heard testosterone, that was a good one. Anna, do you guys know of any other hormones in your body? Mm -hmm. 
No, I don't. <laughs> okay, it's okay. It's okay. And again, we're going to talk about them. I, I was just kind of curious to see if you guys knew of any other hormones. That's what I'm here for. So don't worry. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to share my screen with you guys. And if you could just follow along with me as we talk about hormones. Okay. So going back to Schoology, um, for those of you who didn't get a chance to do so, um, Alma, um, I recorded what the objective for this unit is right here. It's in the folder called Endocrine and Hormone Module. So Alma, you can rewatch this on your own time. So if you click on the red folder, I kind of introduce what we're going to talk about. But here are the notes. So let me just give you some brief notes for today to introduce to you what you guys just talked about in your Zoom groups, okay? So this unit, and again, feel free to take notes along with me if, if you'd like, but again, I'm not collecting notebooks. Uh, as always, the red words are the big ones, right? So this chapter is called the endocrine, also known as the hormonal system, all right? And what we did is we read a um, CSI investigation on a, on a young girl who's experiencing some, some hormonal changes at a very, very young age. And what you guys just told me was that um, these could be because uh, there's something causing her to have too many hormones, but we didn't really come up with a reason as, as to why, right? So that's what we're going to talk about today to see if we can figure out what's happening here. So first, let me give you my, my intro. Uh, on the endocrine system. So can you read us please the slide? Uh, how about Ashley, the, the intro slide? Um, the endocrine hormonal system made up of glands that secrete hormones, chemical signals inside bodies. Yeah, so in a nutshell guys, what the endocrine system is are glands and glands are an organ that secrete or release something. Okay, and what they release is something called a hormone. And what hormones are, like uh, Ashley just said, is they're a chemical signal. They're a chemical signal that tell our body to react, to change, to do something. Okay, so that's what the endocrine system is. Now, how that does that, can you read us that next bullet point, please? How about uh, Haley, the second bullet point? Hmm. Hormones regulate body's growth, metabolism, sexual development, and homeostatic function overall. Very good. So this um, is what it does like in general, but notice the key word there is sexual development and homeostasis. So does anyone remember what we said homeostasis was? The idea of your body staying stable. Yeah, exactly. It's like a stability. Thank you. And it's kind of like where we need to be. So what hormones do is kind of make sure that we're balanced. And does it sound like this young 12-year-old girl, her, does it sound like her body is balanced right now? No. She's like, no, right? Hopefully not. Because these, these symptoms that, that were described in the chapter, that's not normal, especially not for a 12-year-old girl uh, that young, okay? Um, so there's something very unusual going on with her. And the unit is about um, the endocrine system. And so this image here is kind of like an overall of what the endocrine system is all about. So the endocrine system, as you can see here, is made up, you know, actually, let me go larger screen, okay, because that's kind of small. Um, can you guys see that okay? Yeah. Okay, so the endocrine system is actually made up of glands that are distributed pretty much throughout the entire body. There are some glands in the brain, there are some glands right here in your throat area, which we'll talk about. There are some glands here in your, uh, in your abdomen, okay? There's some glands in your uh, sexual organs as well. So they're kind of all over the place. And like Haley told us, it's responsible for sexual development, but like, like Anna told us, it's also responsible for like how our bodies balance overall. So this system is very different than the ones we've been talking about in the past, because this actually, is kind of like the boss of our entire body. So this is a very, very important system, okay? So please take a look at that picture. And um, I'm gonna just highlight a couple of organs that I would like you to write down right now, okay? So please, uh, you have this slide with you, so you can you know, draw this if you want, but I'm just gonna circle a couple of really important terms for us. Um, and those are the, the glands, okay? So we have the pineal gland, so please write these down. We have the pineal gland, which I'll be talking about. 
we have the thalamus gland, the pituitary gland, and you'll notice that these three glands are all found in the brain. So the endocrine system is not the nervous system, obviously, but it works hand in hand with the nervous system, okay? So these three glands are found in the brain, but they're not part of the nervous system. We have another gland called the thymus, okay? Um, we have a gland called the thyroid. We have the adrenals. We have the pancreas. The uterus is shown here, but that's not technically part of the system, okay? But what is part of the system are the ovaries. Now, I know that's kind of confusing because when we think of the ovaries, we think of what system? Reproductive. Yeah, we think of the reproductive. So it's, I'm not saying that this is the reproductive, but the endocrine system works with the reproductive system in females, and we'll see how, okay? And it also involves the testes or the testicles in the males. So please, those red words that I just circled, if you could write those down, and I'll pause for a little bit. And I want you to notice where they're distributed throughout the body, because like Haley and Anna told us, this system has a huge job for us. And to understand that, we need to kind of look at where these glands are located, okay? So I'll pause there for a second for you guys to write those down. And if you want to sketch the little body out so you can see where they're distributed, that might help you too, okay? Any questions so far? Okay, so going back to the case study, going back to the case study about a young 12-year-old girl, where do you think the problem lies in her body? Now that we're getting a picture of what the endocrine system is, where do you think the problem in her is? Um. Can you read me, or do you remember, Brianna, what were some of the symptoms that this young girl was experiencing? Um, she had facial hair. Facial hair, okay. Um, um, which gland do you think is responsible for hair growth? And let me, let me remind you guys, obviously Mr. Trujillo is a good example. Males are usually hairier than females, right? But this girl had a lot of hair growth. So which <laughs> gland do you think, Brianna, is responsible for males developing a lot of hair? Keyword is males. Or anyone. Which gland do you think is responsible for males developing a lot of facial hair? It's on this picture, guys. And again, keyword is male. Good guess. And I think I have my pencil right next to it on the screen. You guys see it? Hello, you guys see where my pencil is? It's pointing to the thyroid. Oh, it is? Oh, that's weird, mm -hmm. sorry. It's because the circles are like not on where they're supposed to be. Oh, I'm so sorry. So it looks different on my screen. My apologies, guys. So on my screen, my bad, on my screen, I had it, do you guys see a little star I just made? It, I, I'm yeah. Sorry. I'm highlighting the testicles. I'm so sorry. So obviously females don't have testicles, okay? And obviously, <laughs> this girl, obviously this girl doesn't have testicles. But the problem that she's experiencing of having a lot of facial hair, muscle growth and all that, technically, and I think, uh, I think it was, was it Anna's group that said testosterone? Yeah. Okay. Technically, testosterone is the hormone that produces facial hair. That's not to say you need to have testicles to grow facial hair because females don't have testicles, but females do produce testosterone. They just produce it in their ovaries instead of the testicles. So this female is experiencing a problem with her ovaries that produce a hormone called testosterone 
Um, but they're, she's producing it like males do, which is what's responsible for a lot of the hair growth and the changes that are unusual for a female. So um, I'll go ahead and clear my drawings. So um, let me show you guys the next slide here. So these are the glands we're gonna talk about. And I'm gonna pause right there, okay? But when we talk next time, I'm gonna to introduce to you the different um, types of gland secretions because the endocrine system, well, you know, actually, let me, let, me just, let me just say this for today. So the endocrine system, what it is, is something that releases a hormone into your bloodstream, but there's actually two different types of ways that it does that, okay? It's called exocrine and endocrine. So can you read me please, Dulce, what is, what is an exocrine secretion? Mm. Where does it say that? Oh. It's, yeah, I can see it. Oh, right. oh you're not looking at my screen? Oh, I'm so sorry. We're still on the other picture. Oh, you know what? Okay, hold on guys, sorry. I think I'm sharing my wrong screen with you. Can you guys see it now? Yes. Okay, so sorry. Can you read this, please? Uh, Dulce versus exocrine. It secrets. Wait. Se secretes. Uh, uh, sorry, I think I spelled it wrong. It's a uh, secretes. Secretes its product into ducts that leads to a tissue. Yeah. So an example uh, that I can give you of an exocrine is like a sweat gland. Okay, so sweat glands are technically exocrine because they secrete something through those little glands and they release sweat out of the body. Okay? And when you think of XO, I want you to think of out. Okay, so that's what exocrine secretions are. Can you read us, please, uh, endocrine secretions? How about, uh, how about scarlet? Um, dark lips secretes. It's product directly into the long distance. Yeah, so these secrete, and I think I'm spelling this wrong, um, they secrete things, but rather than doing it into a duct, and a duct is kind of like a little, think of it like a little vessel, okay? These secrete their product, or the hormone, I should say, directly into the blood. Okay, and endocrine versus exocrine, the main difference, and the reason I put endocrine in parentheses, ductless, is that these guys, endocrine, they don't use ducts. They don't use channels. They secrete hormones directly into the blood. Does that make sense? So this is directly into the blood. This has to travel through a duct. Now, there are two different types of endocrine secretions, and that's where I'll pause, and I'll talk about these tomorrow, okay? So please just copy exocrine and endocrine, and let's review what it is I said so far. So we said the endocrine system is a system made up of glands that secrete hormones throughout the body. And the, the, or the glands are distributed throughout the entire body as can be seen on this picture. And like Anna and Haley told us, the purpose of this system is to basically regulate the entire body. So that's why the glands are distributed throughout, but it doesn't deliver those glands in the same way, right? It delivers them either as exocrine, which means it uses a little duct. And I'm, when, I, when I say duct, I want you to think of like channels, okay? I'll just put channels. So it, it releases them as an exocrine or an endocrine. Does that make sense, people? Yes. Okay, so I'm going to pause right there. I'm going to pause right there because I don't want to say too much for today. And I want to remind you of how this class is happening. Okay, so I'm going to stop sharing that with you. And I'm going to take you back to Schoology. So on Schoology, going back to the module, can you guys see Schoology on my screen? Yes. Okay, so on Schoology, um, now that we've talked about the notes briefly, you have now some assignments that you're going to work on. There are two assignments on here, okay? And I put them both for Friday because from now until Friday, you have two assignments that you're going to do. Meaning, as soon as we end, tomorrow, or even Friday itself, you can work on these two assignments, okay? So the first one is going to be a reading assignment. I'm going to click on it, and if you could please read it for us, 
Uh, how about um, how about Daisy? Can you read us the reading assignment? Students will read the novella article titled "A Nocturne System to Think Critically, Communicate, and Analyze Their Ideas with Evidence" and answer the ELA right prompt. Please see the reading grading rubric to see how you will be evalu evaluated. Very good. So you're going to read that article. And again, to find that article, you have a link called Nuzella right here. OK. Can you do me a favor, Daisy? Do you have the ability to share screen on your, are you on your phone or your iPad or a laptop? Laptop. OK. Can you go ahead and open up that Nuzella article for everyone to see? Uh, yeah. OK, thank you. So we'll wait for Daisy to share the screen, just because I want to make sure everyone's on it. I only have 22 people signed on to Newzella, and so some people still haven't done it. So I want to I want a student to show you guys how to do it. So we're gonna I'm gonna stop sharing Daisy, and if you can share your screen with us, please. I don't know how to do it. Uh, on the bottom, you should have a share like screen option. Yeah. Did you find it? Yes. Okay, so go ahead. There you go. Thank you so much. Okay, so um, Daisy is showing us the Newzella assignment. So you can you hover over where it's at? Well, actually, can you just go back to where it says back to assignments? Okay, so when you guys log in to Newzella, you're going to see that I'm assigning you articles to read. So can you hover over the older one? Just don't click on it, Daisy. Okay, right there. So that was the article that we read. Um, it was like over a week ago. And for this one, um, I uh, had you guys read this article on heart um, structure and function. And then remember, we went over the chambers, the valves, all that stuff. So that's an old one. The current one, go ahead and Daisy, click on what is the endocrine system. Go ahead and click on it. So if you click on that, um, you're going to open up this article, and we read the instructions the other day, but I know not everyone was here. So can you read us one more time, please, uh, Daisy, the instructions? Read the article at any reading level you want. Take the quiz, non-graded. Let me pause Highlight you. And Let me pause you. I'm so sorry, Daisy. And what I mean by non-graded is you don't have to take the quiz. The reason for the quiz is so that you know for yourself that you understand the quiz but I'm not gonna give you points for it. And again, you know me, I like to have you guys do things because again, it's just to check that you understand it. It's self graded, so it'll tell you right away whether you got it right or wrong. If you got it right, that just means hard. Okay, continue, Daisy. Highlight and annotate article, non-graded, and submit a writing response to the Nuzella ELA and science writing prompt, graded. Yeah. Thank you, Daisy. I'm going to change that because um, for this one, there is no science writing prompt. It's just the ELA writing prompt. So can you go ahead and um, uh, uh, go ahead and scroll down a little bit, Daisy? Okay, so go ahead and click on it. And then go ahead and uh, um, go ahead and you see where it says 600L, Daisy? Can you click on that? Okay. So, okay, so, so pause right there. So guys, if you've never used Newzella before, like Daisy told you, you can read at any level you want. Do you guys know what these, what these levels are? These are reading levels. So L means Lexile. So like, let's say for example, you're a senior. Ideally, a senior should be able to read the maximum level. Uh, the 1050 L, that is equivalent to like a 10th or 11th grade reading level. Max is pretty much like a high school 12th grade reading level. If you click on 600L, it just drops down. Go ahead and click on 600L. And you're going to notice that the article, well, I think you're already on 600L. Can you change it to max, Daisy? Okay, you see how it added more words? And oh, good, you already started reading it. So it, it, it gives you more words and notice the word count changes as well. So basically it, it, it adjusts to, to your strengths, okay? So you're gonna read the article, you're gonna highlight, Daisy, can you show us the highlighting you just did? Okay, so you can highlight, like it says there on your own, you can take the quiz. Go ahead and click on the activities now, Daisy, at the top. Okay, so you can take the quiz. 
Okay, so Daisy's gonna go ahead and take the quiz. And again, I'm not gonna grade the quiz. All I care about is when Daisy's done, go ahead and click on activities again, Daisy. There should be a, there should be a writing prompt. Scroll to the top, or here. I don't know where it is. Um, go, go back to the top of your quiz on the far right. Uh, click on X activity. There you go. Right, right there. Yeah. So pause right there, Daisy. So that's what I'm going to have you guys do. You're going to do that, that little, um, can you read the instruction where it says write a short paragraph? Write a short paragraph that explains the central idea of the article. Use at least two details from the article to support your response. Thank you. Does that make sense, guys? That is the assignment for this article. Does that make sense, guys? Does that make sense, guys? Yes. Okay, thank you, Daisy. You can go ahead and stop sharing. Okay, so that's the assignment for the, um, the reading assignment. I have a question. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Do, do all the reading levels, are they the same? Do they share the same amount of information? Um, no, 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 no. That's a great question, Anna. So the purpose of Newzella articles are so that you can actually become a better reader over time. So if you do the lowest level, it has less words and the questions that it asks you are a little easier. Even the prompt is, is a little bit different. The purpose of Newzella is so that over time, guys, you can push yourself to read the maximum. So like as a junior, Anna, you may not be able to, to read the maximum or get all the answers right, but you can challenge yourself. And that's why I'm not giving you any credit for the quizzes because I want you to be able to monitor your own growth. And as a senior, I want you to be able to read all of them at maximum, but I'm not going to, to give any credit for the quizzes. I just want to know that you can do the right. And like I told you guys, because I'm trying to work with you, if you don't get full credit for the reading, just message me back. I'll give you feedback and I'll tell you how to improve. Okay? Okay. Okay. So that's the reading assignment for April 17th. So as soon as we end, like Daisy already did, please start reading the article and do the writing prompt. Clear? Clear, guys? Yes. Okay. Yeah. The next assignment is called the watching assignment. Can you read us the watching assignment? How about, how about Angel? Can you read us the watching assignment? Angel, are you there? Angel, are you there? Yeah. Okay, can you read this? Um, students will watch the Crash Course YouTube video titled and the Crane System to think critically, communicate and analyze their ideas with evidence to answer and, and, and answer the discussion question as a Zoom break out group. Please see the reading slash write, write, watching grading rubric to see how you will be evaluated. Okay. So like I said, guys, I'm trying to not change this class too much. We've always watched Crash Course YouTube, and I've always let you work on those videos with a partner. So I sent you the link right here, and here are the questions. So what we're going to do this Friday is I'm going to get you guys into your uh, Zoom breakout groups, and I'll let you answer these as a group. And what I'll have you guys do is just submit it to me with all the group members in it, and you're going to answer those questions. Is that clear? Just like in class, guys. Is that clear? Yes. Okay, cool. So if no other questions, guys, I'm going to go ahead and go back to the module. So for this week, please start reading the notes, start the reading assignments. The formative assessment is going to be the quiz. I have it set as April 24th, meaning two Fridays from now. I'm going to do a quiz to just, you know, like I always do in class. I may change the date of the quiz depending on how far we're moving, okay? But for now, I just want you to start the two assignments for reading and watching. Sound like a plan? Yes. All right, guys. I'm going to go ahead and end class early then if you don't have any other questions. But please, uh, Dulce, don't forget to message me so you know what you're missing. And anyone else, if you have any zeros or if you know you didn't do an assignment or you want to improve on an assignment, please message me. And that way I'll take a look and give you some better feedback, okay? Right. So, go ahead. Go ahead. Dave. So for the watching assignment, uh 
Uh-huh. Are we doing that in class? Yeah, the watching a sign. Well, that's up to you. I'm going to give oh. you the option, guys. I was I was planning on, like Angel just read us, that we do it as a as a breakout group. However, if you want to just go ahead and do it on your own and send it to me individually through Schoology assignment, let me show you guys something. If you guys didn't know this, whenever you um, check it out, I'm gonna I'm gonna show the course as um, Anna. Do you mind if I if I click on your name? I want to show your grade. Okay, I'm just gonna show what your page looks like. Okay. okay. Uh, Anna, where are you? Here. So if Anna wanted to do that assignment by herself, if you just click on assignment, which is the watching assignment, you know, you can actually just send me stuff, right? If you click on where it says submission, you can send me that, that paper directly. So if you want to do it on your own, you can submit it directly. And then Friday in class, like you can just kind of like, you know, work on the reading assignment on your own if you'd like. But I was hoping that we could do it as a Zoom group. It's, up okay. to, it's totally up to you. And if you want, Anna, if you want to do it on your own, when you get into your Zoom groups, you can kind of just give, you know, your feedback and suggestions to other students anyway. But I'm trying to make this class user-friendly and not too different than what we used to do in class, because I know in class, some people like to do the assignments on their own. Some people like to work together. But, but remember, these assignments are minor points because I'm letting you work together. So I'm expecting you guys to talk and give each other answers. So it's totally up to you. Anna. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. If no other questions, guys, I'm going to go ahead and end class early, but I did record this. So for people that aren't here, I will now officially post all of our Zoom classes on Schoology. Okay. Sound good, guys? Yes. Okay. okay. All right, guys, I'll end you there then. Have a beautiful day, and I will see you on Friday, but please go ahead and start the module assignments, all right? Bye, guys. Bye. 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 Bye.